Welcome to this video in which we will do an example in three dimensions of uh, finding the resultant vector for concurrent forces. Again, concurrent forces are forces that all act on a single point. And in this case, uh, the example we'll use is one that I sort of made up based on the SkyCam. If you're interested in what a SkyCam is and how it works, uh, look it up on Wikipedia. It's basically a device that uh, it's a camera essentially on a gyroscopically stabilized platform that you can fly all over a football field. So the goal here is to figure out, um, in our case, what the uh, resultant forces are on the camera platform. Uh, you can see we have four towers, A, B, C, and D. Each tower is connected to the camera platform, which is this little guy right here, by a cable. And uh, in just a minute, I'll give you the tensions on the cable. And then from the tension and the direction in which the cable's pointing, we'll find the force on that cable, or the force that that cable's applying to the camera. Um, the relative position of the camera and the uh, towers is given by these four vectors. So for example, RPA, this guy right here, is the relative position between the point A, where the cable is connected to tower A, and P, which in this case is the platform uh, that the camera is mounted on. Okay, so this guy right here. And um, the relative uh, from the platform to A, uh, we have minus 390 feet, so the x direction, you can see, we go uh, minus 390 feet. In the y direction, we go 160 feet. And then in the z direction, we go 80 feet. So that's how these relative um, position vectors are computed. Okay, And in many problems, you won't be given the relative position vectors. You'll be given, say, the position of the camera in Cartesian coordinates, and then the position of the cable towers in Cartesian coordinates, and you'll have to find the relative position vectors. But uh, since I'm a nice guy, I decided to start with relative position vectors. OK, so um, if we look at a free body diagram of the platform, we have the four forces applied by the four cables. That's, again, the tension in the cables. And then we also have the weight of the camera platform, which we'll assume is 25 pounds. And our goal, then, is to find the resultant force on the camera platform. So we want to find F, which will be the sum of FA plus FB plus FC plus, oops, that was a mess, FD plus W. OK, that's what we're after. The way we will do this is by first uh, using our relative position factors to find unit vectors that describe the direction each of the forces are going. And then we'll multiply each unit vector by the magnitude of the force to get the Cartesian coordinates for that force. That is, we'll break the force into its x, y, and z components this way. And once we've done that, we'll just sum the x components, the y components, and the z components, and we'll have the resultant force on the camera platform. So that's the plan. So the first thing to make this plan work is we need to be able to, uh, from a relative position vector like this, we need to be able to create a unit vector that goes in the same direction as this relative position vector. So uh, such a unit vector could be denoted lambda hat a. And one way to write this, it's um, the, whoops, the vector rpa over the magnitude of r p A. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is taking the position vector and dividing by the length of that position vector. And that gives me a vector of length 1, which is um, 
again a unit vector and it's pointing in the same direction as my relative position vector. So the only thing I would really need to know then to compute this is RPA. And uh, the magnitude of RPA will be the square root of minus 390 feet squared plus 160 feet squared plus 80 feet squared. Okay, so this is awful notation. Just think of this square root uh, continuing on here. That's really ugly. Okay, so I can compute this, uh, uh, take each of the components of RPA, square them, and then take the square root of the sum of those squares, and then divide each of the components of RPA by the magnitude of RPA, which I would have just computed, and that will give me the position vector. Okay, and um, when you do this and round to three significant digits, uh, you get then that the position vector lambda hat a, this is the, again, the unit, I'm sorry, this is the unit vector going from the platform, or I'm sorry, yeah, from the platform to uh, point A. This will be minus point 909 i hat plus point 373 j hat plus point 186 k hat. And again, each component here, this first component was obtained by uh, dividing minus 390 feet over the magnitude of uh, the relative position vector, which is the square root of that big expression that we did. So that's how I got this guy, and these guys were done similarly. Okay, um, a trick that you might want to use if you're uh, using some sort of computational engine like Wolfram Alpha, it turns out that Wolfram Alpha actually computes this for you, but it's not obvious, at least it wasn't obvious to me, it may be obvious to you, how to make that happen. So one way to make this happen is to type in the point, minus 390, 160, 80, uh, it'll give you the length of that point, this vector length, which is 429.069. Uh, so that's actually uh, computing the square of 390 plus the square of 160 plus the square of 80. Um, you take the square root of that and you get this uh, 42 or 429. And then it will normalize it for you. And if you click on the approximate form here, it basically gives you uh, the unit vector in the direction that we're looking for, which is uh, what we wrote down earlier. So uh, other uh, computational uh, techniques will also work, but I find this one to be particularly handy. So following the same process without, um, without actually going through that process in any detail gives us then the following unit vectors. Lambda hat b is um, 0.761 i hat plus 0.580 j hat plus 0.290 k hat. Okay. Um, lambda hat C, when we compute it, is 0.639 i hat minus 0.730 j hat plus 0.243 k hat. And finally, lambda hat D is minus 0.839 i hat minus 0.4 five one six j hat plus point one seven two k hat. Okay? So now we have all four unit vectors. 
Well, how do we turn these unit vectors into the representation of the force vectors that we need? Um, we'll look at FA. Again, the vector FA is equal to its magnitude, which in this case is 50 pounds, times the unit vector in the direction that uh, FA is going. So if we work this out from our previous um, expression for lambda hat A, we take each component of lambda hat A and multiply it by 50. And in this case, we'll get minus 45.4 pounds times I hat plus 18.6 pounds times J hat plus 9.32 pounds times k hat. Okay, And again, uh, we got each of these components by taking 50 pounds and multiplying it by each of the components in my direction vector. So rather than uh, have you sit there while I write these guys out, uh, through the magic of video, they'll, uh, we'll, I'll work out all of the forces and then we'll sum them up. Okay, so again, through the magic of video, I've written down all of the uh, products of the magnitudes of the forces with the uh, corresponding unit vector. So what we need to do then is sum up the x components of these vectors, these guys right here, and that will give us the x component of the resultant. Uh, sum up the y component, these guys here, that'll give us the y component of the resultant. And some these guys here, and include in this the weight vector, which is minus 25 pounds in the k hat direction. And um, rather, again, than uh, making you sit through the computations, let's just write down what we get. We get F, the sum of the X components, these guys right here, in fact, we'll write this in brown, is minus 14.4 pounds. Okay, the sum of the Y components, these guys here is minus 25.2 pounds times j hat. And the sum of the z components, these guys down here, including our weight vector, ends up being 18.3 pounds times k hat. So there you have it. The resultant of the force, well, of these five forces on the camera platform is given by this expression for F. And um, I guess I could now, if I wanted to, find the magnitude of F. Uh, I'll leave that as an exercise to the interested reader and find a unit vector that uh, goes in the same direction as F. But again, I'll leave that as an exercise for the interested viewer. So, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful.